I find that the one focus scripture that encapsulates the essence of Jesus Christ as our Savior and his enduring relevance is John 14, 6. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This verse succinctly emphasizes the exclusive and essential role of Jesus in our path to salvation in our relationship with God. Jesus Christ is our Savior. He is a Savior to the lost, the bread of life to those who hunger, and the fountain of living water to those who thirst. Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone of every godly home, a strong foundation when the enemy shakes our lives. In the book of Nahum, chapter 1, verse 7, it tells us that the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who take refuge in him. Now, David tells us in the book of Psalm, chapter 18, verse 2, that the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Believers, in the days we live in, there's much talk about change and uncertainty, but nothing, no one can ever replace deter or overcome our Lord. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is more relevant and needed now than ever. As Nahum and David stated, Jesus Christ is our protector and provider, our bridge over troubled waters. He's still the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can go to the Father except through Him. It is imperative for us as believers to follow Jesus Christ, live for him, obey him, love him, and be committed to him. Despite all the scientific breakthroughs and exponential increases in technology, the Bible still holds true. There is no way to God but through Jesus. He is alive right now seated at the right hand of God, his Father. The Bible is clear that when Jesus Christ returns, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. In the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 10, it reads, I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. Now, what does it mean to know the power of Jesus Christ's resurrection? My belief is that when you know the power of his resurrection, you know we serve a living God, a God who is alive. The grave couldn't hold him and death couldn't contain him. Now, the Apostle Paul paints a vivid portrait in Revelations 1, verses 17 and 18, when he describes seeing him and falling at his feet as if dead. But Jesus laid his right hand on him and said, Don't be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I died, but look, I am alive forever and ever and I hold the keys of death and the grave. All across the earth, people worship other gods and idols, but none of their gods can say what Jesus said. I am the living one. I died, but look, I'm alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and the grave. The good news is that Jesus Christ is alive. He still answers prayers today. 
he still heals today. And he can still perform miracles today. Now, it requires us to open our hearts today and believe in Jesus Christ. By doing this, we are promised what is written in John 3, 14 and 15. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life. The question is now, do you believe? With the full understanding that the Bible is clear and Jesus' promises are clear. Now let's go boldly to the throne in prayer. Lord Jesus, with praise on our lips and determination in our hearts, we worship your holy name. We declare, as in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15, that through you, Jesus, we will continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. And the fruit of our lips will acknowledge his name. Jesus, you are the Lord of Lords the King of Kings, and the true vine. Apart from you, Lord, we are nothing. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world, and apart from you, there is no hope. Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life, the only way to heaven, so we can obtain eternal life. Father God, we praise you because you are all-knowing. Your ways are higher than our ways, and what may be unknown to us, you know. You know what tomorrow holds. You know my beginning from my end. Therefore, I need you, God. You are Jehovah Elohim, our mighty and strong creator. You alone can speak worlds into existence. You are Jehovah Jireh, and we look to you for our provisions. You are Jehovah Rapha a God who heals, and I am grateful because you not only heal physical wounds and diseases, but also emotional wounds, broken homes, and broken relationships. We need your peace in our lives, Father God. You are wise in all your ways, triumphant and mighty. I declare your word in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57 which says, but thanks be to God. He gives us the victory as conquerors through our Lord Jesus Christ. I declare your word in Romans chapter eight, verse 37. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. As your children, God, we are indeed more than conquerors. Lord Jesus, you loved us enough to die for our sins. And because of your precious sacrifice on the cross, because of the blood that you shed, today we can say, it is well. We have the victory because you, Jesus, have overcome sin and death has no hold over you. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? In you, Jesus, we are more than conquerors. And the spirit of fear, anxiety, and troubled heart, and depression are all conquered in your mighty name, Jesus. The evil one is conquered in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Psalm chapter 19, verses 7 through 9 declares, The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Father God, may your law refresh our souls daily. May your word be a lamp to our feet, clearly making your way for us instead of the ways of the world. Father God, your word declares in Deuteronomy chapter six, verses five through nine, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, 
and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in the house, when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Father God, help me to realize how important it is to have a deep yearning and a strong hunger for your word. May your word be repeated over and over again by those who live in my home and are connected to me. I pray that your word, Lord Jesus, would greatly impact my life and all who are connected to me daily, transforming our character, speech, and mindset. Lord, we need to know the truth. We need you, Father God. We need your word because nothing else clearly separates holiness from evil in this world, which is full of deception and idolatry. Holy Spirit, please help us to keep Father God's word diligently so that all our ways are directed by you, God. You alone are my strong tower. You are omnipotent and omnipresent. There's nothing too difficult for you. This is why I will set you always before me. I keep my eyes on you, Lord Jesus, because with you, on my side, I will not be shaken. I will not be moved or overcome by the cares of the world. Lord, with you as my good shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not lack, nor be lost or abandoned because you are the good shepherd. My future is in your hands. Lord Jesus, my life is in your hands. I declare that surely your goodness Mercy and unfailing love shall follow us all the days of our lives. Father God, we bless your holy name. We thank you, Master, for hearing this prayer. It is in your mighty name, Jesus, I pray. Amen.